You're listening to the BBM Global Network with 25 years in broadcast audio and video production. Our passionate team creates content and marketing for the world of Internet talk radio. If you've got a passion, come join us at BBMGlobalNetwork.com. The BBM Global Network. Your voice is now heard. Choices are the only thing we have any control over when it comes to living our lives. Welcome to The Denise Hansard Show with your host, Denise Hansard. What choices are you making? Denise is here to help you with positive life changes. So now, please welcome Denise Hansard. Hello, everyone. This is Denise Hansard, and I'm coming live at you with The Denise Hansard Show on BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. Today we're talking about the cost of your limiting thoughts. Do you have limiting thoughts? Do you have those conditioned behaviors that is keeping your thoughts from helping you to create the life that you want? So I've been doing a lot of thinking on this, and as you've been with me, you'll understand that this is what I'm about, the choices that you make in life. And I like to take us into uh, some deeper thinking about many things. So I pulled out the book that I absolutely love, uh, Napoleon Hill's Keys to Success. Now, Napoleon Hill wrote Think and Grow Rich, which has been on everybody's list for ages. And if you haven't read it, I would suggest you read it. And in it, he has a chapter that's called Think Accurately. And this is what he says. Think of your mind as a piece of land through diligent planned work It can be cultivated into a beautiful and productive garden. Or it can lie fallow, overrun by weeds sprouting from seed carried by passing birds and the wind. What you really want to do is to harvest the bounty of your mind. And it is your thoughts, those learned thinking patterns. That's the only thing that you really have a choice in on how you think. You can use them wisely or unwisely. It's up to you. And then he goes on to tell a little story, which I think really might resonate with us in today's world and everything going on. And he labels it the raw power of thought. And I want to share this story with you. An unknown paper hanger used thought powerfully. He sat moodily in a prison cell, contemplating the fact that life offered some people power and riches, while he was confined in this prison for a time. His very act of thought changed his life. The next the world heard of this man, he had written a book in which he frankly revealed the purposes of his mind and put the world on notice of his specific goal in life. Some people read the book and smiled tolerantly. Others didn't even bother since they thought it was the work of a lunatic. A little more than a decade later, this madman had half of Europe under his heel and the other half frightened out of its wits and fighting for dear life. His actions were setting the world on fire. But people in America went complacently about their business, believing that the fire would burn itself out. Now, you're probably wondering, who is this man? It was Adolf Hitler. And he found the opportunity to use his power so destructively because so many people failed to use theirs. We became complacent in the way that we think. And I kind of think that applies today. And this is why we begin to see the chaos of what's going on in the world, most especially in the United States, because we're beginning to wake up and beginning to decide and choose what will we do? What are our limiting thoughts? So think about that. 
on average, a person has 60,000 thoughts per day. Now, that's a lot of thinking, (laughs) and recognize that's on average. Some have less, and some have many more, but on average, there's 60,000 thoughts per day. And of those 60,000 thoughts, 90% of those thoughts are the same thoughts day after day after day. How do I pay my bills? How do I get that new job? How do I do this? It's the same thought. And of those, 70% of those thoughts are negative thoughts. They're very limited in the way that you think. You're so conditioned by the hardships of generational hardships that have gone on, what you've been taught from your parents, from your family, uh, even from school, even from everything that is going on when you listen to any type of music, um, radio, read anything on the internet, listen to TV. We are conditioned to think in a certain way. And where does that leave us? It really leaves us with a moment of choice to begin to break those patterns, to get out of our complacency, to begin to think more positively. Okay? So I want to tell you a little bit of a story on the choices that have been made. And this story is about elephants. Do you realize how they train elephants in India? In India, you know, um, they need these huge animals as beast of burden because they carry tremendous loads, trees, stones, sand. In some cases, the load is so heavy, even a tractor couldn't manage it. And training a fully grown, enormous elephant to do these types of jobs, think about it, it's nearly impossible to do if they're already grown. So they had to get creative. And the trick that they discovered about elephants is to train them for carrying heavy loads beginning at infancy. So what they do is as the elephant is born, becomes probably under a year old, they will tie a thick rope around the leg of the baby elephant. They stake it in the ground to tether the animal the baby elephant begins to struggle and tries to pull itself free. And the rope and the stake are strong enough to keep that small animal bound. Think about that. It tries so hard to pull away because it wants to walk. It wants to go to its mother. It wants to get out of its space. And yet it's being held captive. It is limited. And so finally what happens? That baby elephant gives up. It succumbs and it submits to being the prisoner of that captivity. And as the elephant grows in size and strength, you might think that the farmer would need a larger stake and rope to hold the animal, but that's not the case. Once the animal, the elephant, gives up thinking it can escape, the size of the rope and the rope altogether with the stake is no longer needed. In fact, They can even make it smaller because as soon as the elephant feels the slightest tug of restraint, it gives up. It's become conditioned to be held back. It doesn't know anymore. And so when the elephant becomes an adult, all they have to do is to pull a few river reeds from the river and they weave those reeds into small ropes and they use them to tie the two-ton elephant to whatever they want it to be tied to. That simple river reed, that river reed rope is really what's restraining the elephant. It is the feel of that rope around its leg that helps it to remember the conditioned behavior and the limited way in which it's able to move. That's how they train elephants. Well, people, we, are also like that. Just as that elephant has been conditioned to believe its limitations, we, as humans, have also been conditioned. We don't even recognize it, and yet we engage in what is called this river reed thinking, this conditioned behavior. Inevitably, due to the experiences we have, our behaviors, our upbringing, uh, advertising. Uh, Look at any magazine, you'll see how we're conditioning our youth to maybe not feel good enough. 
we begin to allow ourselves to believe in limitations. I'm not pretty enough, I'm not young enough, I'm not smart enough, good enough, wealthy enough to have anything I want in life, the job, the partner, etc. These are not true thoughts. These are the negative thoughts that go on in our head because we've been conditioned with this limiting thought. And guys, the real truth is that no one is actually contained by anything. Mankind is not really limited by anything other than our personal thoughts and our beliefs. It's not predetermined in any way, shape, or form. Now, history, childhood, family, or economics, we get to choose. And there's really nothing greater in the world than the presence and the power that we have within each and each and every one of us. Through our thinking, through exercising our thoughts, not being complacent in our thinking, which means that we're not learning, we're not stretching ourselves to grow. I wrote a whole book on this called Suffering and Comfort because we get in the comfort zone of the pain that we know that keeps us stuck right there. It's uncomfortable, but it's comfortable because it's what we know within everything. When we often allow our thinking to limit ourselves, we allow it to begin to restrict us. Self-doubt comes in, self-esteem becomes very low. And basically what we're doing is we're giving our power away to everyone else around us, to other people, to situations, to circumstances. We unwittingly, unwittingly allow you know, our family, our friends to influence us, advertising, what's on the news. We become fearful, so much so that I've heard a lot of my friends and clients say, I don't watch the news anymore. We hide ourselves into the comfort zone that we know. And that's when we abdicate our power and our dreams for our life and what we really want. And it doesn't have to be with this way, guys. Because what's within each of us through our thinking is greater than anything outside of us. Any circumstance that comes into your life, any situation, the power of your life, the power of your thinking and the choices you make can go beyond any stories that have conditioned you to think you're not enough. Your history doesn't have to determine your destiny. And what's possible for each person is determined by what you truly think and believe. And our our quest right now is to rise above any limitations that we have in our thinking to ultimately require you want to move beyond limited thinking. And I want to be able to give you a process in which to do this because it's very important to be able to choose your thoughts to understand that you are thinking and you have a voice with this thinking. And I've got three simple steps that's going to help you to break free from any type of river read thinking. So go ahead, get pencil and paper. I want you to write this down. Think about it. And if you'd like to join this conversation, be sure to call at 866-451-1451. We've got to go to a commercial and we'll be back in just a moment. Baby boomers face many challenges, and sometimes you have to reinvent yourself in order to stay on top. Sharon Ball, nurse practitioner and Christian life and wellness coach, can help. Sharon has written a book called Reinventing Yourself Today, and it can help you through the pangs of changing the course of your life. Whether you are looking to stay on track with new goals, a sensible program to help you shed unwanted pounds, or a full kick-butt life reinvention, Sharon can work with you. Follow your passions and live each day according to your dreams and free yourself from the expectations of others. Sharon comes from the heart and shares her own personal journey to reinvention with her clients. Other self-help books inspired her, but few gave her the steps to improve her life, so she created a plan that works. Stress no more. Let Sharon Ball open the door. Sign up for a complimentary life reinvention consultation today at tinyurl.com forward slash get started for free for more of what life has in store. Hello, everyone. This is Denise Hansard, and I am the host of the Denise Hansard Show, and you're listening live on BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. Today we're talking about the complacency in our thinking and how it's costing the limitations that we have within our life. 
And I told you about the story of the elephants and how elephants were trained to carry heavy loads from an infancy, from babies, and how they used river reeds. And I associated it with our own conditioning and the past stories that we've had in our life of how we have river reed thinking. So I wanted to give you a tool on how to break free from that river reed thinking. And it's a simple step. It's three steps. That's all it is, guys. And I want to preface it by saying this. You get a choice in everything that you do in life. And it doesn't happen overnight that you change behaviors. What do they say? It takes 21 to 30 days to create a new habit. So what that means is you put it into place with a discipline and an intention of deciding for you and your growth. So let's get into the three steps. First one, awareness. Isn't awareness always it? You want to identify what are your limiting beliefs? What do you tell yourself over and over and over again when you get upset, when something happens in your life that you're not liking, when you begin to react, when you're feeling down and vulnerable? So here's what I want you to do. I want you to imagine, you know, For just a moment, imagine the life that you really want. Not that you can't have it. Not the critical thinking. Pretend that I have a magic wand. I'm waving it over everyone and saying you can have anything in the world that you want. Don't think about money. Don't think about time. Don't think about education. Any limitations. Get rid of all of that. and Just think about the life that you would really want. Where would you like to live? Would it be in the mountains? Would it be in the city? Would it be both (laughs) on the ocean, near water, uh, and another country? Just imagine for a moment, where would you like to live? And then what work would you love to bring into this world? What would you love to do day in, day out that didn't feel hard or difficult? It came easy and you just lit up every time that you did it. And what would you do with your time Because now you've got all the time in the world. You don't have to worry about anything. Imagine that life and the person you would be within that life. Who's with you? What are you doing? What would you be doing? Imagine that as if it's happening now. Okay? And I know some of you going, yeah, yeah, Denise, that's it. And guess what? That's what I want you to do. Think about that. What beliefs or limited thinking are you presently having that's not congruent with the beliefs that you can have that life? Write those down. Because these are your go-to thoughts or your river read thinking. And they're not serving you when you're looking at moving beyond the comfort zone of your pain. So that's the first step. Imagine yourself having everything in the world that you would want. See what thoughts come up and write them down. Write them down on a piece of paper. And then the second step is to replace those old limiting beliefs with empowered beliefs. In order to move beyond the limiting beliefs, you got to do something different, guys. Otherwise, it's known as insanity when you expect different results doing the same thing over and over again. We have to go into a mode of transformation of change to decide that you have to rise above what you're doing now with your limiting thoughts to look at things differently. So what you do is you look at the thoughts that you were limiting you of coming up before that you you had and you want to replace those with a different thought. So you write down your replacement beliefs that challenge any old ideas that you had. What thoughts and beliefs would you want to have in order to live that life? Write those down and do it in a way that allows you to look at both. If you're saying, "Uh, I don't have the education to be able to do that. I don't have enough money. Just write the opposite of that. I have everything I need. Education, money, time, it doesn't matter to live that life. Write it down. And then the third step is about focusing your thoughts into that energy of already being in that situation and releasing those limiting beliefs. 
So the one page that has, or the column and everything that has all of those limiting beliefs, mark through them, just mark them all out as if they don't exist anymore. If you wrote it on one sheet of paper and the other beliefs on another sheet of paper, burn the paper that has the limiting beliefs. I don't care. As you begin to mark them out, visualize that these ideas, these thoughts don't control you anymore. They're not a part of you. You don't need them to have power over you, which has the power of the results that you have in your life. And imagine that they're literally moving away out of your mind, your heart, your soul. And then focus on the new empowered beliefs. I was just told we have to go to a commercial. If you want to talk to me, it's 866-451-1451 and we'll be right back. The earliest human societies worshipped a female goddess. Little is known about this time because we did not always have a written recorded history. It was around 3100 BC when the Sumerians invented the first written language and everything that preceded this time is prehistory. The prehistorical record includes all of women's unwritten history from 30,000 B.C. to the time that men began achieving political power around 3,000 B.C. Male feminist artist Kimberly Berg maintains a strong position in educating and inspiring both men and women through his devotional art to the goddess in all women. Studying their history is paramount to understanding who women were and who they would become later living in a patriarchal society. To learn more about this important time in our history, go to www.isisrising.net. Do you ever wonder why certain things are happening in your life? How to start a business or a new direction? Need answers? Astrologer Bonnie Perbula can help you reveal your true self and gain strength and focus so you can achieve greater joy and success. Working with a natal birth date, time, and location, Bonnie brings out qualities to aid you in getting the best from your life. She can help you unlock dormant traits to bring you greater awareness. Bonnie also conducts public speaking engagements to educate aspiring astrologers on their journey to the stars. A gifted artist, Bonnie bridges her talents and recently launched a line of Astro Bears, uniquely created in colors of individuals' astrology charts. She also makes one-of-a-kind necklaces of crystal beads and woven thread. To learn more about the world of Bonnie Prabula, go to BonnieGPrabula.com and for astrology consulting, visit AstrologyConsultants.com or call or email her at 808-526-1536 or BonnieGP at AOL.com. Hello, everyone. You're listening live to the Denise Hansard Show on BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio, and I'm your host, Denise Hansard. We just finished up with three steps in which you could stop and break free from your river rethinking, those limited thoughts that you've been conditioned to have. And what I told you was you got to let go of them. you got to identify them. you got to write them down. You've got to replace them. And what you want to do is then to focus on your new empowered thoughts in order to move forward. And you have to listen to the small voice inside of you that says, now do this, take this action step. Because that's what it's really about. You're far more powerful than you realize. You have that power to choose, to break free from limiting mindsets, and really to get out there and do what you want to do. Because what you really want to do is to get rid of the river rethinking. Because remember, everything is energy. I know we've talked about this before, and it stands to be repeated again that all things are created twice. So, Wallace Waddles, he's an American author and new thought writer back in the day. He's best known for a book called The Science of Getting Rich, written in 1910. Uh, he put into thought and examined how to become wealthy. And it's not, uh, there's no copyright restrictions, so you can go Google it and download it, The Science of Getting Rich. Now, I have this book, and I was given a challenge by a coach of mine in which to do an experiment. There's four chapters she gave me out of that, and she said, read each of those four chapters daily absorb them, think about them for 90 days straight. I started doing that, really beginning to change my thinking when about, uh, I was about 50-something days into it that I skipped a day. <coughs> Excuse me. And I had to start over again. It literally took me about six to seven months 
to really get back into it or to complete it with everything. That day came. I completely forgot about it. Excuse me. (coughs) Give me a moment, folks. (coughs) Essential Nutrients LLC is the brainchild of entrepreneur Barbara Burns. Inspired by a desire to help others, Barbara worked with a team of scientists to develop unique nutritional liquid supplements with the goal to improve the quality of your life. Glucosamine, zinc, and calcium are essential to well-being, and this is the focus of Essential Nutrients LLC. Whether you're a professional athlete, weekend warrior, student, business owner, or homemaker, Essential Nutrients offers products for everyone, including the family pet. And they're easy to take, no pills. Health requires commitment, exercise, a good diet, proper supplementation, and action. So take action today and get your supply of Essential Liquid Nutrients by visiting www.essential-liquids.com. Don't put off your health any longer. Take Essential products today and start to measure the difference. Animal lover, author, artist, and public speaker, Patricia Daly Leip is a Renaissance woman in her own right. A lover of animals from a young age, Patricia lives on a farm in Virginia and has rescued neglected thoroughbred horses, keeping them or finding them safe havens. She is also a published author, and her books document real life experiences that she shares in her passionate stories, taking the reader around the world in a colorful kaleidoscope of life. An accomplished artist, Patricia Daly Life's oil paintings feature animals, portraits, stills, nature, and abstract, and she allows the brush to paint the image in an organic, natural way. A public speaker, Patricia is motivated to continually wonder about life and advocates for all of us to do the same and document our own unique history. To learn more about Patricia Daly Life, visit www.literarylady.com and www.patricialife.com or email her at pdlife at gmail.com. Hello, guys. We're back. Sorry about that. This is what happens when you get into this type of weather and the dryness. So I was talking about Wallace Waddles and the science of getting rich and having the discipline that took me almost six to seven months to read those four chapters, really absorb them and to begin to put them into my life. And what I really love about the book is how he explains the process of our thoughts The process of how our thoughts, our beliefs, begin to create everything that we want in our life. It creates our reality. And he puts it like this. Thought is the only thing that can produce tangible riches. And even though he's talking about wealth, he's talking about everything. He said, man is a thinking center and can originate thought. All the forms that man fashions with his hands must first exist in his thoughts. He cannot shape a thing until he has thought that thing. And that's what I mean by everything is created twice. It basically says we have to think it first, and then it becomes a reality. The home you design, first it was a thought, and then you put it into place. The invention of the combustible engine, it became a a thought at first. Um, Henry Ford told his engineers, he said, here's what I want to happen. Here's how it needs to be designed. Here's what it's going to do. And all of his engineers looked at him and said, it can't be done. And he basically challenged them and said, it has to be because I have it as a thought. If I can think it, we can make it a reality. And of course they did. And the first step that you have to do is to really believe in you. It's that seed of faith that you have within yourself, that you believe in yourself, that you can take action steps to begin to create something just like Henry Ford did. And guys, we do it all the time without even realizing that we're doing it. We proclaim how bad we feel, even when we initially thought that we weren't feeling that bad until someone comes up and they influence us by saying, do you feel okay? (laughs) Are you sick? Because we then take it on. We begin to absorb that energy and go, you know what? Maybe I don't feel so well. We begin to live from that place of 
scarcity. We continually claim that we can't afford even some of the small pleasures that we have in life. A cup of coffee with a friend, um, taking a walk because we can't afford to have the time that it would be to take a walk or to have that phone call with your mom. We can't afford things. We have to, we have to look at what we're saying. Um, we begin as we have that process of thinking, we choke out the opportunities that are coming into my life, into your life. <laughs> and the most common way of creating for my thoughts is through how we talk to ourselves. We talked about this, what we say to ourselves internally, what we say to others. So think about the common phrases that you use in your life. How often do you find yourself limiting yourself by saying, I can't, I don't know, I'm sorry. I wish I could. Let me go see. Let me ask. All of these phrases begin to have you giving away your power energetically. They're allowing you to not be responsible for yourself and your beliefs because they just automatically pop out of our mouth and into the reality that we create. They're harsh. And I truly know that our words have extreme power and we want to be able to make different choices with them. So instead of saying things like, I can't, empower yourself and say, well, I'm choosing. I choose not to go do this or I choose to go do this. That's much more empowering by limiting yourself of saying you're unable to. I can't do it. And say, instead of saying, I don't know, you can say something like, you know what, I'm going to go find out. I, tell me more about that, and I'll find out for you. Instead of saying, I'm sorry, say something like, I feel you. I understand your pain. Use more of an empathy with them. You know, saying things like, I wish I could, you know, those are basic ways to saying that you're not even able to have power over the decisions that you're making. You know, come out and say it. Say, I'm working on achieving that. This is my goal. This is where I'm going. Those are the words. You want to reframe the phrases that are limiting you today into more powerful ones, choosing the most positive ones. Because when you say them to yourself and out loud, you begin to reshift and get rid of most of those limiting thoughts that you have. And it is the conversations that we have with ourselves. I can't do it. I'm not good enough. What makes me think I can? All of these are a choice. And they're the choice that we make to be in our comfort zone, to suffer in that. So step back. Look at it. Do you have control over the choices that you're making? And when I say that, I'm talking about the choices in your words, now, I'm going to tell you, I have a lot of clients that tell me, oh, my God, Denise, I have control issues. I can't do that. <laughs> you know, and what I ask them to do is a simple process and they'll go, I can't do that. I have control issues. I need to be in control all the time because I'm asking them to let go of past behaviors, to release negative thoughts and replace the thoughts with more positive ones. It's in that moment that you become aware of everything of what you're about to say, that you can pause, breathe, and make a different choice. And if you think that you have to have control over everything, you're really limiting yourself, almost like putting a river reed woven around your leg, putting a rope staked into the ground so that you have limited yourself with everyone. Because when we have that opportunity to change and to grow, um, to really enhance who we are, to choose to step into personal development, it's not the easiest thing in the world. Transformation is a choice. And the reason you make it is because you've suddenly realized that the pain that you're in is greater than where you want to go and you have to look at where you want to go to be greater than that pain. That's where the transformation comes from. Realizing you can't stay in the pain that you're in now. So if you're thinking that you have control issues, think about this. 
choose to say, I have a choice issue, not a control issue. See how that reframes your thinking and what's going on in your life. Because bottom line, when you say I have a control issue, you're basically choosing not to choose. Again, you're giving your power away. Because think about it. What do you really have control over? Can you control the weather? Mm, Not usually. (laughs) Can you control other people's thoughts and behaviors? Yeah, not usually. If you want some type of control, just like Napoleon Hill said, the only control you really have is over your thoughts. Make them good ones. Think about it like this. Olympians, the athletes in their training to win that gold medal, they have to choose their thoughts. Let go of past behaviors. Recognize who they can be. See themselves winning in that moment, in their training, to do the work in a transformative way, to let go of any control issues, to begin to change with everything. Because with every season, and right now we're in the autumn season, maybe, I think, it'll go 85 one day and then 50 the next, but we're in autumn, which I love, love, love autumn. Autumn is probably one of my most favorite, if not my most favorite time of the year. Um, the color of the leaves, the Christmas of the air, the awareness that time kind of seems to slow down. You know, I get to leave my windows open at night and snuggle under the covers. It's just great. And there is a a term, a, a, a phrase I want to call it. It's either from the bird song, turn, 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 or it's from Ecclesiastes that says there's a time for every season, a time to let go, a time to not stay stuck in the challenges that you have. And I think everybody pretty much knows that it's for everything there is a season and a time for every matter under heaven, a time to be born, a time to die, a time to plant, a time to pluck up what is planted, a time to seek and a time to lose, a time to keep, a time to throw away, a time for everything is basically what it's saying. So when you have those challenges in your life that really begin to make you wonder, do I have to control everything? What am I thinking? Where am I going? Can you shift those moments, what I call life happens moments, those challenges that are handed to you? And what do you do when those are handed to you? Well, guys, you want to find the beauty, the gift in each and every one of those of what is being offered to you today. It could be a slight nudge from the universe telling you to go in a different direction, taking you where your heart is calling you to go and and go beyond the fear of the unknown, because that fear is what's really been keeping you stuck. And you want to make it work for you. You've got to hit the pause button and just breathe into everything. Go with the flow of life. Because you're on this journey in life. You can choose to struggle, trying to control everything, which we just talked about. Or you can allow yourself to flow like the river into whatever comes next to you with your eyes wide open. Because here's what I know. We get that choice in each and every moment of our thoughts, of our reactions, of our behaviors. Choosing, hitting the pause button and breathing within everything. Um... And there's going to be times, guys, that you can't do this. And I'm just going to say, walk away. If you find that you're too emotional with things, walk away. Come back to, to have that another day. You just need some downtime. It's not always that you're going to be perfect. We're not all Pollyannish. I'm not. I have my limited thinking also, which is why I'm constantly working on it. The tools that I give to my clients, I give to myself. It's just that mine... Challenging moments or those life happening moments happen quicker that I can get myself out of them unless I don't put self care into place. Because if I'm not allowing my own regeneration of me and the discipline that I put into my life with meditation, exercise, choosing to eat healthy, choosing me before anyone else. I'm not able to recuperate and to really get into those moments of content and flow with everything. I want to go through a process with you of 
how to get into the flow when we come back after this commercial. We'll be right back. Animal lover, author, artist, and public speaker, Patricia Daly Life is a Renaissance woman in her own right. A lover of animals from a young age, Patricia lives on a farm in Virginia and has rescued neglected thoroughbred horses, keeping them or finding them safe havens. She is also a published author, and her books document real life experiences that she shares in her passionate stories, taking the reader around the world in a colorful kaleidoscope of life. An accomplished artist, Patricia Daly Life's oil paintings feature animals, portraits, stills, nature, and abstract, and she allows the brush to paint the image in an organic, natural way. A public speaker, Patricia is motivated to continually wonder about life and advocates for all of us to do the same and document our own unique history. To learn more about Patricia Daly Life, visit www.literarylady.com and www.patricialife.com or email her at pdlife at gmail.com. Patricia Fayeweather Harlow is passionate about the environment and conserving our natural resources. She's written a five-part book series for all ages called Rock with Rodney and Party with Perky to Preserve Wildlife, which brings awareness through these vibrant characters on preserving and protecting our national parks and historic landmarks. Harlow has launched a campaign to mobilize green supporters, informing a united front against big oil, big coal, and the Keystone XL pipeline, and she addresses the controversial practice of fracking in books four and five. She's determined to bring greater awareness to the dangers of drilling and running crude oil through pipelines that cut through pristine landscapes, and she empowers readers to take action in keeping America beautiful. To learn more about Patricia Fayweather Harlow and to purchase her books, visit www.patricia-fayweather-harlow.com. That's F-A-Y-E-R-W-E-A-T-H-E-R. And play your part in preserving the landscape that we all share and love. Hello, everyone. This is Denise Hansard. I'm your host of The Denise Hansard Show, and you're listening live on BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. We're talking about limited thinking and the cost that it has with us. I was listening to Deepak Chopra this week, and everything that he says really resonates with me and what I teach. And I love the reinforcement when I listen to him. And he talks about everything that we're talking about today with uh, our limited mindset and how we've been conditioned with everything to let go of the conditioned self. Um, And you're more than your I, more than who you are. And I wanted to go into one of the things that he was talking about when he was saying, this is how you can really identify with the seven signs on what is going on in your life when you know you need to reset your thinking. And I totally agree with him on this. So the first one is when you have a lot of disappointment and regret. So when you find yourself regretting things you've never done, when you find yourself being disappointed in an action step that you took and behaviors, uh, how you reacted in a situation, that could be a good sign that you need to reset your thinking. When everything feels like a struggle and it's hard work, that could be a sign that you need to reset your thinking. When you have this vision of yourself, as I took you through earlier, of who you truly want to be because you've got a dream that's just pouring out of your heart and you keep pushing it down because you don't believe that you can do it and it hasn't happened yet, that's a sign that you need to reset your thinking. When you feel disconnected, disconnected from the world, from everything going on around you, and there's a sense of loneliness. Let me reframe that. There's a sense of being alone, not loneliness, but being alone. That's a sign that you need to reset your thinking. When you feel like you've got to have control over everything, and I, again, you just heard me talk about that. I talk about it all the time, and this is what he was saying. When you need to have control over your life, that's a time that says you got to reset your thinking. When you feel the need to get ahead in life and move beyond where you are today, getting out of the stuckness, getting more clarity, that's a sign that you need to reset your thinking. Or last, when you feel as if you have no purpose in life whatsoever. Maybe you need to reset your thinking. 
And here's what he do- dove down into, just as I have. It's about that critical mind, the conditioning and generating thoughts that aren't yours, that are keeping you really, really stuck with everything. And I love the way he put this next one, because he really talked about it in the way of four stages of being. And we all start at the bottom with this first state where we are just doing We're just creating busyness in our life because we're doing something that makes us feel as if we're being productive and yet we're not accomplishing a whole lot. This is just a reactionary moment in our life. Always doing, doing, doing because that makes us think we have the illusion of being productive. That's where most people live. And then you may step into the next phase, which is about thinking and setting intentions. It's about the reflective moments that you have on your thinking and choosing with intent what your thoughts are going to be. could be in a meditative state where you're thinking about who am I? What is it I want to do? What's my purpose? And what am I grateful for? This is the state that as you're moving up that ladder of awareness within personal growth that you want to be in because then you're choosing everything. And then as you make those choices, you move to that next step of feeling, of understanding that you get to even choose how you feel about things. And the choices that we really want to work our way around is love, compassion, joy, equanimity. Because once we reach that state and our awareness, we then get into a state of being, being And it is about an awareness without judgment. You just are. I think I heard someone compare it to, when I was expressing this, it was someone comparing it to almost like that runner's high. You're in the flow. Life is just wonderful. And this is where you want to be. You're viewing the world and yourself being totally aware in the present moment of everything everything in your life, your choices and everything without judgment. That's the way that you shut off the critical mind and move beyond the emotional blocks that have been holding you back. Because what is going to happen, guys, is that we always have those moments, which I call the life happening moments, those challenges, the struggles that you have. And this can be that moment in time when you feel as if, like Deepak Chopra said, you need to reset your thinking. You're having disappointment. You're having regrets. It is always that time that maybe that inner voice is trying to get your attention and say, grow. Let's get get to that next step that we want to do. And you have to move beyond the limiting thoughts that you have because sometimes we feel like no matter what we do, what we say, how we act, no matter, no matter, no matter, nothing else is going to change. And it's almost like a foregone conclusion. And this phrase came up um, when I was working with one of my clients not too long ago. She was having, being asked her opinion in a certain hiring process. She expressed her opinion only to find out that it wasn't what they wanted to hear. <laughs> it wasn't the popular choice. And she said, she said, Denise, they keep coming back to me, asking me again and again, thinking I'm going to change. And I just don't even know that I can say it any differently because it just seems like a foregone conclusion that they're going to choose, which is choose something that I don't think should happen. And we talked about this because in her mind, she thought, why should I even say it again. Why should I go there? She was getting quite emotional, thinking past on on other things of where she'd felt she had not been heard at all. Because she'd already stated her concerns and said what she needed to say, and it still wasn't what they wanted to hear. What I helped her to delve down into was how she was feeling behind all of this. Could she just give up and accept that it was a foregone conclusion and maybe regret that she didn't speak up in a different voice? Because what they really wanted her to do was to give them permission to move forward. Because she's important to them. And yet... Her permission was not what she wanted to grant to them. She wanted to be able to state it and differentiate things. So when you're finding yourself up against something like this, the key is to recognize that you matter and you have a voice. 
no matter how many times you have to say something in many different ways, it's important for you to do it anyway. It's important for you to know that you do matter. We're going to tie this all up. We've got to go to a commercial, and we will be right back giving you more on this. Intergenerational programming is uniting America due to the tireless efforts of Dr. Ramona Frischman. Retired from the Miami-Dade County Public School System, Dr. Frischman continues to develop intergenerational learning programs aimed to improve the lives of children, young adults, and seniors through unique strategies and public policy in order to establish a mutually supportive agenda. She views intergenerational programs as a resource for policymakers and the general public on economic, social, and personal initiatives that govern our society. Her work bridges the generational gap, providing many individuals the opportunity to explore areas of common ground and celebrate each other's diversity. Contact Ramona Frischman at RamonaLong at AOL.com or visit www.gu.org to learn more about intergenerational programming. My Dreams, My Challenges, and Joys is an inspiring book by author Linda Genazzo. This real-life account of raising a child with autism from birth to adulthood takes you on a journey of compassion, love, and hope as it tells the incredible story of a devoted family and their beloved daughter. Together, they faced adversity and never stopped believing they would find the help they were seeking. A breast cancer survivor, Linda Genazzo has a giving heart. With a background in social work with the mentally ill and the homeless, Linda continues to help families in her community. And her book, My Dreams, My Challenges and Joys, brings greater awareness to autism and those families in need. To purchase your copy, visit www.lindagenazzo.com. It's also available on Amazon.com and BarnesandNoble.com. Don't delay. Get your copy today. Hello, everyone. This is Denise Hansard, and we are tying up our program today on the Denise Hansard Show with our limiting thoughts and what is it costing you? We've talked a lot about how you get to choose your thoughts. I was just delving down into what one of my clients was talking to me about, about how someone wanted her to talk and to give her opinion on things that she didn't agree with what they wanted to do. They kept trying to get her to change her mind and give them permission to move forward without giving her blessing. Um, What I dove down into with her is that she had a voice. And it was through that voice that she really does matter. It doesn't matter how many times you have to say it in many different ways. It's important to do it anyway. Because you are the one that's going to be living with the choice you make on expressing yourself. And everyone's not going to agree with you, and that's okay. What's most important is for you to feel you have done everything you can respectfully to make a difference. And the key word there is respectfully. We started off with a story about Adolf Hitler and becoming complacent in our thinking. And I tell you right now that we kind of see that in our world today. And we see it in a way in which we feel that maybe we're not being heard. And if you feel like you're not being heard and you do want to be heard, you have to change the way that you're stating things. You don't need to raise your voice in anger or raise your voice in an intonation that is going to stick with people for a long time. Those words that you state with anger and intention of anger is always going to be there. It'll be out in the open with you, with everyone else. What you want to be able to do is to raise the vibration of your words, choosing the words that are more empowering. They do not, you do not have to raise your voice. Your words being respectful, coming from compassion, will have a louder voice than raising your voice itself. So if there's a part of you that's maybe feeling lost, confused, and not sure what to do next, reach out, guys. Don't be alone. Seek out the needed resources to help you find that voice of clarity, the strength of you 
coming from your true self. I can be that person for you. I have a group program that could be just the thing for you. It might be that nudge that you need. You may be feeling as if you're straddling the fence with one foot in the past and one in the future and nothing really here in the present. And so my program is called Get Off the Fence, because that's what you want to do. You keep going back and forth over this fence that you're unsure of what to do, because the fence is what's keeping you stuck behind everything. It could be a fence that you really want to move beyond. You don't have the clarity, the forgiveness, the way of letting go with everything, So if you're feeling as if you're stuck and not knowing how to empower yourself and your words and to be heard through everything, let's get that going for you. So if you're restless and longing for something and you can't quite put your finger on it, this could be it. If your life is stuck in a neutral pattern, that could be it. If you're struggling, this could be the program for you. Because imagine that you could let go of your limiting beliefs Allow the fear that you have of stepping out to become your friend, motivating you to do more. Allow yourself to see your worth and all that you have good, to be good enough releasing old stories of your past. This program is a 90-day program. You can go check it out on my website, denisehanser.com. It's called Get Off the Fence. Guys, when you choose you, you choose you, life begins to take that form of contentment, joy, and compassion. When you choose to move beyond the fences of fear, insecurity, aloneness, life begins to flow. I'm an expert in transformation. I've got that, been there, done that. Masters in counseling, 20 years in the corporate world, and certification in coaching. I know what it means to be stuck in limited thoughts. I want to help you to move beyond those limiting thoughts. Choose you, denisehanser.com, get off the fence program, because one choice can change you. Make that choice for you. Catch you later. You've been listening to The Denise Hansard Show. It's with our choices that we create our greatest life. One choice can change you in amazing ways. Join us each and every week for solutions and transformation. Here on The Denise Hansard Show with your host, Denise Hansard. You've been listening to the BBM Global Network. The ideas, views, and opinions of this broadcast are those of the participants of the program and are not necessarily the ideas, views, and opinions of the BBM Global Network Company.